and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hi everybody, this is Avi from AF Math. Today we are continuing our project management video and we're going to do a cheat sheet edition. And I know that a lot of people watching our channel are students and not people from the industry. And we got a request from students if we can do a cheat sheet video where we actually take all the videos we did so far on project management and write only the equations. So students can use that video and actually and take the formulas and put them in their cheat sheet. I'm also going to try and publish this video in a Word document or a PowerPoint document so it will be easier for you to copy the equations. This video is going to be very short, it's going to be a bit messy and I hope you can follow on on the logic I try to build here. I just try to do as little slides as possible and as organized as I, I could. So let's start. Our first topic was the EVM which is a project management technique for measuring project performance and progress in an objective manner. And if you remember, we had these key concepts, the plan value, the actual cost, and the earn value. And we used these key values with the following formulas to calculate the cost variance, the schedule variance, the cost performance index, schedule performance index, percent complete, FCA, and FSV. That if you remember, the SV here is in days. <laughs> Once I'll upload this video to YouTube, I'll put a link below that can send you to the video where we further explained this concept and where you have the actual example that you can solve it. Usually these equations should be enough and should give you the overall picture of where your project is standing. If you take a certain day and decide I want to know if we are over or under budget, if we are ahead or behind schedule, how is my project performing, how are we progressing, how much is complete, and when are we actually going to finish. So this is a very good tool that can give you a nice picture for the project. The second topic was CPM. We did an AON, which I don't know why is not capital, and logic network. The critical path method is the sequence of scheduled activities that determines the duration of the project. In this topic, if you remember, we had our three by three square here with the early start, early finish, total floats, late start, late finish, the name of the activity and the duration, okay? And here you have all of the definitions for each one of these. And we used it to draw either a logic network or a node diagram. Okay, an AON network is simply you do the task and you draw arrows to the task. Okay, it's a very simple graph that just helps you get like a general picture of what's going on. A logic network is actually taking this square and saying this is our activity and we start to draw each activity and we go forward and then we go back and we have a complete picture of our project in terms of which activity can start when. Now, here it gets a bit now, here it gets a bit messy, so stay focused. When going forward, my early start, okay, you have the concepts here on the side. My early start equals 0 for the first task. Early start plus duration equals my early finish. Early finish equals the early start of my next activity. Okay, early finish equals the early start of my next activity. If my early start has two immediately preceding activities, IPAs, we pick the bigger number of the two. Okay, if I have two numbers here for my early finish, the number that I will pick for my early start is the bigger of the two when I'm going forward. Then once I'm done and I'm going backwards, let's say that I'm done, so I have 10 
plus duration equals 10 plus duration. I'm saying that my EF is equal LF for my last task. And now that I'm going backwards, LF minus duration equals my LS. Okay? Now, when I'm going from a when I'm going backwards between activities, my LS equals LF of I minus 1, which means the previous activity. Okay? The LS of D equals LF of C. That's all what it means. If my LF has two backwards activities, this time we pick the smaller of the two. So if I have LS of 10 and LS of 5, this time when I'm going backwards, I'm going to pick LS of 5. When calculating the floats, we simply say that the total floats for an activity equals LF minus EF, okay, LF minus EF, and LS minus ES. Both sides should match. If they don't match, you probably made a mistake somewhere. Then once we get those, we find the critical path where the total floats equals zero. And remember that there could be more than one. Moving on, our next topic, which is also CPM, is the node diagram. We basically took the logic network and transferred it into a diagram. Very simple. We had the activity, duration, early start, early finish, late start, late finish, and total floats. And we had another new concept called free floats. And basically we can take our three by three square and set the numbers over here. Once we finish setting everything in the node diagram, we can calculate the free floats. And the free floats is the maximum amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the following activities or the entire project. Your total floats should be bigger than your free floats. It's one of the conditions. So our equation was free floats for an activity equals the minimum early start of the next activity, the minimum of the two, minus the early finish of the activity discussed. So for example, if I have A, B, and C, and I want to calculate the free floats for A, I'm saying the minimum ES plus 1, the minimum of ES, B, and ES, C, we have 11 and 10, so the minimum means the smaller of the two, which is 10, minus the EF of A, which is 9, gives us 1, okay? And moving on to our fourth topic, the President's Networks. Presidents networks are node networks that allow for the use of four types of relationship. Finish to start, start to finish, finish to finish, and start to finish, which is less common. Now, if you remember, we solved this complete example. Again, for each topic, I'm going to provide the link for the example. The goal here is that you already notice the example and you know how to solve it and you can just add this to your cheat sheet whatever you want to take from here if it's the way we drew it if it's the condition the start start the finish finish the numbers the calculation the starting point and the ending point and here we were giving this table with all of the condition we were, we were told the relation the lag and we had to fill in the early start, early finish, late start, and late finish by ourselves. So if you remember, when we have a SS relationship, for example, for task D, it means that activity D cannot start until activity A begins, which means that if the early start of A equals zero, and we have here early start, you remember I just put it in a different note, our early start equals zero. Our early start for D has to be equal or bigger than zero. So we can pick one or two or three, but we usually like to pick zero because we wanna finish the job as soon as possible and get paid. Now in returns to finish finish relationship for task F. Activity F cannot finish until activity C is finished. So if the early finish for activity C equals five, the early finish for activity F needs to be bigger or equal than 5. 
Next topic. Our fifth topic was the same president's networks, only we add the DRF, URF, and SRF to the equation. And if you remember, the equation for DRF is EF minus LS minus duration. If our answer is negative, we use zero. And for our URF, we pick the minimum number of LS minus ES or LF minus EF, the smaller of these two. And if our DRF okay, equals zero, we use this equation for SRF. And if DRF is bigger than zero, we use this equation for SRF. And our last topic, we had resource allocation and resource leveling. If you remember, resources in construction indicate three main categories, which is labor, equipment, or materials. Labor are the actual people that work on the site. They could either be paid by the hour or a constant amount of money each month which then means that you're not obligated for a certain amount, amount of hours, okay? You can get that operator to stay and work for you all day because you know you pay him by the week. So it's just a different way of looking at it in terms of how much are you actually going to pay. We have equipment that is used for construction but is not permanently installed in the project, the backhoe, the excavator, the D9, the whatever you may think that you need to use or it could be even the hammer, okay? Whatever equipment that you use, which is not permanently installed, and the materials are the materials that stay in the project after completion. For example, the asphalt, the concrete, the cement, the uh, whatever, okay? The drywall, whatever stays. Resource allocation is assigning the required resources to each activity in amount and time. Resource leveling, basically minimalizing the variations resources used during the project. And resource leveling is necessary to improve efficiency and minimize the cost of the project. And we can try to use resource leveling by postponing the start of the more, no, 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 of the less. Let's fix it, of the less critical activity until the the critical activity has finished activities has finished okay now that we fix that so we can try to use resource leveling by postponing the start of the less critical activity until the critical activities has finished now if you remember we have if you remember, we had our example here, okay? And in our example, we had to allocate resources and to not have more than 15 labors a day, okay? And once we actually drew the resource diagram, we noticed that we have 16 labors on the eighth day of the project, and we had activity C and D, and we had to decide which one of them was not critical, like I corrected before, and as we can see, activity D is critical, and activity C is not critical, and that's why we can take the eight laborers working on activity C and send them to work in the same day that activity E is being performed, and by doing that, we meet the condition of 15 laborers a day, and again, you will have the link for the video. You can watch the full example. And that's it, basically. That's all we did so far. Those are all the methods that we learned. I'm going to do two more videos. In one, I'm going to solve a full example, okay? Which I hope will help you understand the entire topic. And another video I want to do, which is about start to finish relationship which is not very common and some dick professors use it. They will try to fail you. So we will try to do an example to help you pass through your exam. So that's it for now. Stay with us.